Hello, I'm Alexandra Semi, and here are our top stories. Upcoming elections running on stricter rules. Living in the now? Here is why you should think of the future. Celebrating sensual legwear, it's National Stockings Day. Next Wednesday sees the election of a new Students' Union President and Executive Committee. These will be fought under new rules brought in to prevent malpractice of the kind highlighted by this program during the last poll. Charlie Williams met the man tasked with reforming the system and presents a list of the runners and riders. With student elections just around the corner, the campus is in full preparation mode for hustings and the campaigns of students to have eyes on presidency. However, as the last election was made in controversy and allegations of bribery, Bob Watt, Professor of Law at the University of Buckingham, was called to lead an inquiry into the malpractices. You are there to do something for other students. You are not there to do anything for yourself. Unfortunately, after the last election to student union president, there were a number of complaints. Complaints were that the election was not clean. We asked Bob what his investigation had discovered and what could have been done differently. What did you discover by looking at the election procedure? We d discovered that there was the opportunity for um, illegal or corrupt practices. Uh, we didn't actually discover that any had taken place. What's been changed? Rules that clarify the conduct of candidates, making sure that they don't entertain people, give out food and drink. Yeah, it, it is so that everybody um, is elected on the basis of their policies rather than on some sort of threat, present, um, or whatever else they want to do. What would you say makes a fair election? Good choice of candidates, all with different, po all, all with different policies, who stand on what they're going to do for the students. And that's what the university wants, even if you say something that the university doesn't particularly want to hear. That's great, that's what you're there for. The hustings will take place on Tuesday the 30th of October at Chandos Road, and the election will take place the following day from 12 till 4 in the OTN. The presidential candidates are Aspen Del Machi, Devendra Cardin, Asmin Planme, and Kumis Poyaji. We can only hope that after this election today, this election won't leave the same bad taste in people's mouths as the last one did. Charlie Williams, Buckingham News. Theatre lovers are in for a treat next week when the Old Jailers, Buckingham's top amateur thespians, put on their next production. Michael Pearson went to see them in rehearsal. The Old Jailers is considered one of the best amateur theatre groups in the South East and they rehearse right here in the University. So we've come along to find out about their new play, Who Done It? The play is set in a traditional country house. We spoke to director Karen Cockerill about the project. So what's your upcoming production? This play is um, called Who Done It? It's by Anthony Schaffer, who wrote Sleuth. So tell me about the play. It's very funny. It's very, very politically incorrect. <laughs> so it was written in the 70s, so sort of quite different sensibilities there. We also spoke to cast member Katie Thomas about her role in the play. So what type of character are you playing? Well, I'm playing Lady Tremorane who is an aristocratic, bitchy lady. Do you like playing those parts? I do. I often play bitchy people. But I'm not a bitchy person, I'm a really nice person. No, I do. I have played comedy roles. I've played all sorts, but I usually end up playing a baddie. So what brought you to the old jailers? I, don't, I got involved in the first place by mistake because I went along with a friend that wanted to part in the play. She dragged me along to give her some confidence. The director told me to stand up and read. I read and I got the part and she didn't get one. So I've been doing it ever since. So if you want to find out who done it, get yourself down to the community centre on the 1st, 2nd and 3rd of November. This is Michael Pearson reporting for Buckingham News. Ever wondered why you're a useless hippie dosser fit only to listen to Pink Floyd and whine about 9 o'clock lectures? Maybe it's because your goal setting strategy isn't as sharp as it could be. Santa Rebecca Kala met visiting lecturer Alan Keyes for a lesson in planning for the future. Mr. Alan Keyes is visiting the university to give a lecture on self development strategies and corporate communication techniques. We had the chance to speak to him before his lecture. How important is it for students to set goals? Uh, I think it's vital because it's vital for everyone to set goals. Um, and obviously when you get a student, you're an adult, like it or not, <laughs> and goals are vitally important. 
uh, in all elements of our lives, whether it's in business, at home, leisure. Um, it doesn't matter because if you, uh, if you don't have a target, you don't have a clue what to aim at. Do you think these techniques should be learned from an earlier age? Uh, personally speaking, no. I think there's probably too much, uh, too much pressure on, uh, on children and adolescents as it is. I think that there are probably certain uh, general lessons that can be learned about um, questioning and challenge. What are the main mistakes people make when they set goals? Setting on, on, you know, goals which are vague, um, goals which are perhaps too far in the distance, too far ahead. Um, so it's more difficult setting out a plan, a tactical plan to get, to get there. Um, setting unrealistic goals, particularly for people who perhaps are challenged with a uh, lack of confidence, which is true of many young people. Set goals and fulfil your true potential. It's never too late to start. This is Sana Rebecca Carla, Buckingham News. Those of you who have lectures in the IFLH or in CRB 1 and 2 in the Chandos Road building will have seen the paintings of Anthony Green, whose works are on permanent exhibition here. The artist was at the university on Tuesday to talk about his life in pictures. Helen Thane was there to talk to him. Anthony Green is an English realist, printmaker and writer. He joined us at Buckingham this week to talk about his life in pictures. We joined him after his talk to find out more. I was eight when I started copying pictures from Mickey Mouse comics. At school, when I was 12, I really had a wonderful art teacher, who was a professional artist, who introduced me to all sorts of marvelous things. Van Gogh, for instance, he introduced me to those 12 now. Fifty odd years ago, a colleague of mine, who I'd been a student with at the Slade, looked me straight in the eye and said, really, Green, you're not a proper modern artist. And I laughed it off. It's been niggling at me for over 50 years. Uh, I suppose... He was right. What or who has influenced your work the most? Well, Vincent van Gogh was an artist who really kind of, I, I fell in love with him, and to this day he's probably my favourite artist. And then a whole series of other artists. I mean, I was brought up on European painting. Your paintings aren't simple 4x4 four four canvases. How do they begin to take on their original and unique shape? If I say to you, you remember your bedroom this morning when you got up, and you immediately remember it, don't you? But you don't remember it in your mind's eye as a rectangle. You simply have sufficient information in your, in your memory bank. It doesn't have a rectangle around it. And that's the world I'm trying to capture. Anthony Green is an honorary graduate of Buckingham, and many of his paintings can be seen on display around campus. This is Helen Thane, Buckingham News. Saturday was National Stockings Day, so we decided to investigate the local lingerie scene to discover whether the world's most sensual hosiery was a real lady's choice or simply a case of male overexcitement. While her gentleman colleagues were fighting over the assignment, Amy Hogson slipped downtown. The first stockings were made of cotton, wool, linen or silk and were worn to warm one's legs. It wasn't until 1920 that stockings became a fashion accessory and it was a further 20 years until the first nylon stockings were made. Today, stockings are associated with temptation and sexiness. But are they really only strapped on for seductive measures? Here at Sweet Dreams, we talk to the experts. Stockings, pantyhose, tights. What is the main difference? Well, pantyhose is the American word for tights. And then hold-ups, they stay up on their own because they have a silic yeah. around the top of the leg. But stockings... Um, in order to wear stockings, you do have to wear a suspender belt in order to keep them up. Is there a certain type of stocking for a certain leg type? They do come sized, small, medium and large. If you buy them too small, then they don't come high enough up the leg, they only just come above your knee. If you buy large and you're not really large, then you tend to get wrinkly ankles. And what are they generally for? And it's usually for occasions i.e. it's bridal, weddings, christenings, um, birthdays, anniversaries, also fancy dress. We get quite a lot of people buy fishnet stockings, particularly for, you know, past eras. Whether it's winter or summer, day or night, stockings are a suitable accessory to draw attention to one's legs, or if need be, to keep them warm. This is Amy Hogston reporting for Buckingham News. After last week's success on the pitch, the university's football team was hopelessly outclassed in their next game against Saishim Reserves. The gremlins that dogged the team were at work in our camera too. We apologize for the lack of sound in our report.
The first half of the game is too distressing to show. Sirisham having gone three up with some ease. Buckingham played three at the back, a tactic that failed to counter Sirisham's attacking play. Buckingham switched to a back four at the interval, which allowed him to challenge more at the other end, and were it not for this glaring miss, would have reduced the deficit. However, Sirisham remained a clear and present danger to the Buckingham defence, with constant pressure on the back line. A fourth early on in the second half put the game beyond reasonable doubt. And when Sirisham bagged the fifth, it began to look like a rout. Will McPhee, however, did grab a consolation goal to salvage some dignity for Buckingham. But Sirisham were in complete control and were creating chances at will. So it wasn't a surprise when they grabbed the sixth after a lightning quick counter attack. And crushingly for the boys in red, number seven followed soon after. In spite of this defeat, Buckingham stays second in North Bucks Division 1 with 5 wins, 1 draw and 4 losses, but a massive 17 points behind the league leaders. Get the kitchenware out and heat up the oven for another episode of Cooking With. Favor Oyabode was looking over the chef's shoulder. Hello and welcome to Cooking With. We're back in the kitchen with Rachel Pekin and a simple recipe for cheese on toast that could fill your tummy and go easy on your wallet. Oh. Cheese on toast. You might think normally, okay, well, you know, any cheese will do. And to some extent that's true. But the best cheese to use is Lancashire cheese. A teaspoon, to start with, of mustard powder. We add some beer. Okay. Okay. Not an awful lot. Um, let's call it uh, three tablespoons. Okay. Then pop it around to make a little kind of paste. Before an ounce of butter. A nice shot of Worcester sauce, a bit stirring, don't let it boil. Basically, you can use a couple any brown bread crusts. you want. Go down really well. So, add the cheese, Oops. and just keep it stirring. To make it even richer, there's a I've couple of here, eggs, which I've just beaten up. I'm just going to add and fold it into the cheese mixture. Right. Pop the it toast may out. seem a bit of a palaver to all to do all this, but the taste is just worth waiting for. Okay. Instead of calling out for a pizza, why don't you just make this ten times and more savoury? And after about two, wow. three minutes. Ooh. Now you're not. Now, you're not going to tell me that's not the tastiest thing in the world. Dive in. Mm. Now, how tasty is that? Nice. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. We leave you with a farewell to the recent charter fair that gave the centre of Buckingham a taste of Disneyland.